Hello, my name is Rick McGavick. I'm with Siemens Field Support. Today we'll explain how to configure field equipment to communicate with the Rail Fusion server. To start, let's cover the components required in the field. First up is the SEER 2i event recorder. As the name suggests, it records events but also generates alarms based on those events and sends them to the Rail Fusion server. The SEER 2i collects data from many components, including the GCP4000. It connects to the GCP4000 through a built-in echelon connection along the backplane of the chassis. The SEER 2i also connects to the WAG unit on the echelon network. The WAG takes echelon data it receives from the SEER 2i and transmits that information to a cellular modem, which then transmits to the RailFusion server. The cellular modem may also have a serial connection to the aux port of the SEER 2i to allow for remote terminal connections. To begin configuring a location for RailFusion, we begin with the WAG unit. Connect the laptop to the WAG unit using a 9 to 25 pin serial cable and a null modem adapter. Once you've connected your laptop to the WAG unit, open a hyperterminal connection. Name the connection, whatever you like, and connect at either a 9600 or a 57600 baud rate. Be sure to set flow control to none. The first thing you'll want to do once hyperterminal is connected is check the software revisions currently in the WAG unit. To do so, type REV and press enter. The versions will appear on the screen. Check them against the RailFusion configuration documentation. Generally, the software is already up to date and the only thing you'll need to update is the configuration file. However, if you do need to change any one of the software versions, use the X file command and follow the prompts for downloading software. Every site will require a configuration file to be downloaded. This is also accomplished using the X file command. In the X-File menu, select option 3 to download a configuration file to the WAG and press Enter. Next, using Hyperterminal, click Transfer, Send File, and browse to the configuration file you wish to upload. Having a configuration file ready for each site ahead of time saves a lot of time in the field because you will not have to go into individual settings and modify them. After loading a configuration file, you will want to check all of your configuration settings and also make any changes necessary. To do so, type CON and press Enter. The first page of the configuration screens will appear. Note that the Type 7 WAG address at the top should match the Sears address exactly except for the .0101 at the end. The Type 3 office address is typically the same for all WAG units across your system. For the Echelon address, the last two digits indicate the Echelon slot on the SEER 2i that the WAG has been assigned to. For example, if the WAG has been assigned to slot 3 on the SEER 2i, the WAG Echelon address should be 01.03. Always verify your WAG circuit ID on the second page of the configuration menu. After the WAG configuration is complete, we'll need to add the ATCS site ID in the GCP4000 programming. To do so, open the DT program on your laptop or use the display module on the GCP4000 itself. Next, go into the main menu, Classic DT, Site Programming, and then ATCS Site ID. The default ATCS Site ID will appear. Enter the ATCS Site ID, which should always end in 16, and click the Apply button at the top of the screen. In the Verify dialog box below, you will see that a CRC has been generated for the new ATCS Site ID. Enter the new CRC in the CRC field below. Once entered, press the Select key on the CPU module and then click the Accept button at the top of the screen. At the bottom, in the Confirm box, you should see Changes Succeeded, and you know that the ATCS site ID has been accepted. After entering the ATCS address on the GCP4000, we can now move on to the sear 2 i configuration. Connect to the sear 2 i user port using a serial connection to a laptop running Hyperterminal. Typically, the baud rate is 57600. To open the SEER menu, type Control-L. 
the first thing we'll need to check is the versions. You can either hit the letter L or scroll down to versions and press enter. The current versions running in the SEER 2i will show up on the right hand side of the screen. If the executive software needs to be upgraded, you'll need to reboot your SEER 2i unit and follow the prompts at the beginning of the boot process. Once all software has been verified, the first step is to upload a new CDL program that is compatible with the RailFusion system. To do so, go to the application menu from the main screen and press enter. Select the first option, download file to SEER, and for segment to download, select CDL and press enter. Next, use HyperTerminal to transfer and send over the CDL file. Once the CDL has been uploaded, the SEER 2i unit will begin to beep, indicating that site setup must be performed. At this point, the installer should gather the latest plans, showing the new RailFusion SEER 2i settings. Although SEER 2i configuration and portions of the site setup can be done from a laptop, it is highly recommended that you go through the full site setup procedure on the GCP4000 display. This ensures that no steps are skipped and that everything is set up properly. Be sure to take your time performing site setup because if a mistake is made, there is no back button and you must start over. To begin the site setup process on the SEER 2i, press the SEER button on the GCP4000 display module and then press front panel. The site setup button in the upper right should be pressed to start the process. You'll start entering things such as the date and time and site name and proceed from there based on the plans you have at the site. After the first stage of site setup is complete, the question reset names and modules comes up. If you are going to be updating any modules, such as an ILOD or a VHF communicator, as part of this process, you want to say yes to this question by hitting the up arrow and then pressing enter. Note that after doing that, you will want to install or reinstall modules during the final phase of site setup. If at any point during the site setup process you do make a mistake, the best way to start over is to hit the cancel key, the up arrow to select yes, and then enter. Then start over by hitting the site setup key. The WAG module will also need to be installed. To do so, use the laptop SEER menu. From the main menu, select Configuration and press Enter. Go down to Modules and press Enter again. Select Add Module at the top of the screen. For module type, use the arrow keys to select WAG. Press Enter and then give the WAG a name. The default is usually preferred. Press Enter, then say No for Edit Settings and now the WAG has been added. Exit the module maintenance screen, and before leaving the configuration menu, select Save Changes and press Enter. The SEER 2i will now compile, and site setup will be complete once it's finished. Once you've completed the site setup process, you want to check the module COM status on the SEER 2i to make sure that you're communicating with all of the components. To do so, from the main menu, go to Monitor, and then choose Module COM Status. A list of components will appear. In this case, you see the WAG and the GCP4000. The GCP4000 is showing a good status, so nothing further needs to be done. However, the WAG shows a bad status, so you'll want to go back in that case and check the wiring and the configuration settings. Once all field devices are communicating properly, it's time to verify RailFusion connectivity. Log in to the RailFusion website and see if the new location is reporting its site name, milepost, and other identifying information. If it's not, contact your RailFusion administrator. If you have any issues configuring your site for RailFusion, contact our tech support line at 1-800-793-7233 and press 1 for tech support. Thanks for watching and have a safe day.